He was a glorious stroke maker, perfectly balanced at the crease. He was an icon, an inspiration for his people. He overcame racism and the tyranny of distance to achieve greatness. Intelligent, astute and graceful, George Headley is one of ESPN's legends of cricket. In 1932, playing against a touring English first-class team, George Headley played what observers called the perfect innings, 344 not out. In 1932, um, Lord Tennyson, the former England test captain, brought a team to Jamaica and to the West Indies, and Headley slaughtered them. Um, he started, he scored an innings of 344 not out and it, it's been described by those who saw it as the perfect innings. In the series, he, in the matches against the Tennyson side, he, he scored 723 runs, uh, was only dismissed twice, lower score 84, an average of 361 and a half. Uh, Tennyson, the captain, described it as being just the innings as of perfection. And he also commented that uh, Headley throughout that series just should um, display the, a complete variety of strokes. I would imagine that George Headley in 1932 was a batsman as unlikely to be dismissed as any cricketer in the history of the game. Headley was a small, finely constructed man who hit the ball with great power. A little man, tiny man, but he had that, the eye, George Headley's eyes had something, had a sparkle. Most of the top batsmen have got great eyes. Their, their eyes give, you know, show something in, in there and, and you can recognise that something is, that makes them different. What uh, Grimmett has said and what Bradman has said about uh, George Headley that he was one of the greatest players the world's ever seen. Older West Indians say that he was the best ever from uh, the West Indies and uh, I can believe them. I've only seen things of him on television, so I can't go into any detail on that, but people I trust say, look, that guy was absolutely magnificent. He was very strong in every direction. His defense was splendid. He had a full range of shots, played the hook shot, and was particularly strong on the onside. Um, Clary Grimm had always said that he thought George Headley one of the greatest players that he ever bowled to. And of course, Clary bowled to all the great players of that era, so his opinion ought to be respected. I, I rate George very highly indeed. In Australia, his prolific run-getting earned him the title of the Black Bradman. They called him the Black Bradman. Somebody called, said well, Bradman was the Black... Uh, the, he, was, he was the White Headley. <laughs> You'd say um, Headley is the Black Bradman and the guys in the Caribbean would say no man you got it wrong Bradman's the White Headley and uh, so obviously he was and, and I'm talking in the 1970s and he I mean he basically finished by the war he, I think he played one or two tests after the war but he was past it by then so I mean he'd basically finished by the end of the 30s and here we are in the 70s and people were still talking about uh, George Headley and how good he was. In his demeanour at the wicket he was quite like Bradman, um, a, a compact figure, he moved his feet very quickly, played off the back foot a lot but was capable of coming down the wicket. Very attractive, wristy, uh, more attractive than Bradman to watch, more graceful uh, and stylistic uh, than Bradman. Um, and very effective, a, a great deflector of the ball. His statistics alone uh, emphasise that he was a great batsman. He played in the 1930s when the West Indies had first come into Test cricket. He wasn't uh, surrounded by any player who was of note, so he had to carry the batting on his own. He was known as Atlas in the Caribbean. Because of that fact, he carried the batting on his shoulders, and he averaged um, just over 60 in Test cricket. And between 1928, when the West Indies first came into Test cricket, and 1939, when the war broke out, the West Indies uh, had scored 22 Test hundreds 
all told, and he had scored 10 of them. So he really was the dominant batsman. And um, people referred to him as a black Bradman. West Indians referred to Bradman as a white Headley.